I have made a few videos about the Life Engine, but in this video I'd really like to take some time to explain in depth how it actually works. The Life Engine is an artificial life simulation that allows virtual organisms to spread, compete, and evolve right in your browser. I want to explore the core of this simulation, the sort of physical and biological laws in this virtual world that allow life to emerge. I also wanted to announce that the Life Engine is now open source, so if you really want to dig deep, you can look through the code yourself. But for now, let me explain the Life Engine. The world is a grid made up of square cells. Everything is made of cells. These are the sort of atoms of the world, the building blocks of the environment and its organisms. They can be different types, like food, which I'm drawing now, Food can be eaten by organisms, uh, and I'm replacing it now with empty cells, these dark blue background cells, which don't do anything, obviously. Now, organisms are structures of cells. Here we have the default organism, which is three cells, three anatomy cells. Here are all of the anatomy cells laid out. These cells can only exist within an organism. They can only be part of an organism's structure. So let's walk through what each of these do. The most important is the orange mouth cell, which eats food in directly adjacent cells. So we can place food all around it, and on the next frame, it will eat the food directly adjacent to it. Every organism needs to eat as much food as it has cells in its body in order to reproduce. So every organism needs a mouth. It's the only cell that is absolutely essential. The green producer cell generates food, creating it in adjacent cells. Every frame, it has a small, random chance of producing one food cell in one adjacent cell until it eventually fills up, as you can see here. That random chance can be tuned in the Simulation Controls tab. The light blue mover cell allows the organism to move and rotate randomly. We'll get more into that in a bit, but all it needs is a single mover cell and it will bump around the environment. It just needs one, adding more doesn't make it faster or give it anything special. Now, an important note about movers, they can't produce food even if they have producer cells. Those cells are just useless, though you can change this in the simulation controls if you want. The red killer cell harms and potentially kills organisms when it touches them in directly adjacent cells. I'll explain this more in a bit as well. The purple armor cell defends against this simply by ignoring the effect of the red cell when it's touched. And finally, the eye cell, the light purple cell with a slit indicating the direction it's looking, up, down, left, or right. The eye allows the organism to see and alter its movement based on its perceptions. Again, we'll explain that in a bit. And so here we have the standard starting organism, made up of a mouth cell and two producer cells, which produce food that is immediately eaten by the mouth. Now that we understand its basic anatomy, let's walk through its life cycle. Once an organism is born, a timer begins counting down until its eventual death, when it is turned into food. The length of an organism's lifespan is calculated by multiplying the number of cells it has by the simulation control parameter called lifespan multiplier. In this case, it has three cells with a lifespan multiplier of 100, so it will live for 300 frames. Another way organisms can die is by being killed by other organisms. When touched by a killer cell, an organism will take one damage, and once it has taken as much damage as it has cells in its body, it will die. Again, this organism has three cells, and after taking three damage, it dies. This allows organisms to prey on each other by killing and eating them, including members of their own species and even their own children or parents. It also means that larger organisms are better defended since they can take more damage. Now of course the goal of an organism is to reproduce before it dies. So once an organism has eaten as much food as it has cells in its body, it will attempt to reproduce. The larger the organism, the more food it needs to reproduce. Offspring are formed by first cloning the current organism and then potentially mutating it. We'll get into the details of that in a bit. And the organism can be born in any direction, up, down, left, or right, and has a random rotation. Now, reproduction can fail if the offspring attempts to occupy non-empty cells like other organisms or food. 
If reproduction fails, then the food required to produce the child is wasted. Now this introduces a little entropy. Resources can be forever lost. It also means that static producers are somewhat dependent on movers to clear away the accumulated food from dead organisms. So let's talk more about movers. This is a super basic mover with just a mouth and a mover cell, and it's able to move freely about the grid. Again, it only needs one blue mover cell, adding more doesn't do anything. And by default, an organism selects a random direction and moves one cell per frame in that direction. After a certain number of frames, it will change directions and rotation. This number is called the move range, and it can mutate over time. Organisms can also rotate around a central pivot cell, which is the only cell that can never be removed. Movers rotate randomly when they change directions, and their rotation is not necessarily the same as their movement direction, i.e. they're not always facing the same direction that they're moving. This is actually an important detail for how eyes work. If I add an eye to the organism and put some food right in front of it, uh, we can see that it moves right towards the food and eats it, and uh, we can see that there's some mutation happening there as well. Now the way eyes work is that any organism can evolve eyes, but when an organism has both eyes and mover cells, it is given a brain. The eye looks forward and sees the first non-empty cell type within a certain range. The brain will then think about this and decide what to do. It can act by either moving away from the observed cell, moving towards it, or just ignoring it and continuing in whatever direction it wants. The brain maps all the different cell types to one of these three possible actions. So, for instance, by default, the brain will move towards food and away from killer cells. These behaviors are also subject to mutation, and the organisms can learn better ways of navigating their environment. So how exactly do organisms evolve over time? First, an important question. Do organisms have genes? Functionally, yes. Information is being copied and pasted from parent to offspring, information that defines the makeup and behavior of that organism. So, genes. It's not clear-cut genetic code like DNA or a string of ones and zeros. It's more of a mishmash of parameters and data structures that are less straightforward. But it doesn't really matter. Information, i.e. genes, are being passed to posterity, and they can mutate over time. Now, how does mutation work? Well, when born, offspring have a small chance to mutate their anatomies in three different ways. It can grow a new cell with a random type, it can change the type of an already existing cell, or it can lose a cell. Note that this can result in organisms with gaps and cells disconnected from the rest of its body. I consider this a feature, not a bug. Additionally, if an organism mutates, there is a 10% chance that mutation will also alter other miscellaneous traits. These traits include the movement range, brain decisions, and the probability of mutation itself, which I call the mutability. And it doesn't really take any more rules or systems or code to build in the evolution itself. Organisms that survive, eat food, and reproduce propagate throughout the environment, and those with more advantageous mutations, or genes, will propagate more. True natural selection, no need for a hard-coded fitness function that evaluates whether an organism should survive or not. Through trial and error, organisms will discover strategies to better propagate their genes, and others will have to adapt or die. What emerges is a diverse ecosystem of complex and interdependent life, ever competing, ever adapting, ever evolving. Endless forms, most beautiful. Thank you for watching and supporting this small passion project of mine. I intend to continue exploring the Life Engine as well as other projects and ideas on this channel, and I am very grateful for those of you who are here for the ride.